A happy Wednesday to everybody. Josh here on The Wrong Lead. Joined as always by Mr. Andrew Champagne for another episode. Drank and Champagne. It's been a couple of weeks, Andrew. Yeah, it has. We've been busy. I know it's it's a crime to be busy, but it's been a very busy couple of weeks for both of us, actually. You've been off doing Hawthorne stuff. I've been off doing Hong Kong stuff, which we'll get into a great deal on today's show. But uh, yeah, it's definitely good to be back. Uh, I should tell our listeners, by the way, if you hear a fan off set here, uh, that's sort of a necessity here in Northern California. The heat wave that was advertised has come. They're talking 107 degrees on Wednesday, 104 degrees on Thursday. Uh, I, I may be asking the fine folks at the Alameda County Fair in Pleasanton to please turn up the air conditioning. Hmm. The joke is, of course, that everybody's outside. Ha, 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 Yeah, it plays really well with them, just like it does with you, Josh. But yeah, we've been busy. It's been a really good busy, though. Lots of really cool things going on during what's traditionally a pretty slow time for racing in general. So it's uh, it's good to have stuff to do. Yeah, um, so last week I was actually on vacation. Uh, I was in uh, I was in Mexico. So I, uh, family and I went down to Mexico. Um, you know, my, uh, my mom, you know, out of the goodness of her heart and, and the fact that, you know, my, my dad wanted us to, to take this trip and, but unfortunately he passed before we could take it. Um, we, uh, we went to Mexico, uh, as, as a family, uh, and, you know, did all the, all the cheesy stuff. We, my wife and I, we did an excursion with, with my sister, brother-in-law and, uh, and my mom. You know, we uh, we took family photos that were entirely way too expensive on the beach, um, and you know we had a good time. A uh, couple of a uh, uh, couple of I guess I guess highlights while we were down there. Um, the the resort we stayed at was um, it was fine. It's about it's about uh, about as there was nothing really wrong about it. Um, it just was like. Out of all the resorts that we've stayed at down there, it just, you know, it just didn't, you know, there was nothing really about it that really, I guess, like wowed us. But hey, free is free, free vacation. I'm not going to complain. Uh, so, uh, you know, we made, uh, you know, we had, we had a good time. So, was it an all inclusive resort? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can't complain about that. It, no. It's it's against the law to complain about an all inclusive resort unless something thoroughly bonkers happens. Yeah, no, I mean, it was just the usual, like, you could tell the hotel was older, needs to be renovated. They've renovated some parts. They, I, I don't want to say that they put lipstick on a pig because um, the bones, I think, are still good for the resort. But you could tell that, like, there were, like, three different pools. And you could tell that one of the pools was to the point of disrepair where, um, like... There was just like tile, like it was like a mosaic tile type thing, and there was just tile missing from the bottom. Ooh. And I think a girl cut her foot. Oh God! On it, and oh, so that's it was not just good like no. Ooh. And so like, but my wife and I, we spent zero time in that pool. There was a much nicer pool on the other side of the resort, and that's where we stayed the entire time. But um, yeah, it was just like weird stuff like that. Like you know, you're like you're literally, literally all people do is come here and hang out by the pool on the beach. You would think the pool would at least be in, in good shape. Um, but the food was pretty decent. Um, the room, like I said, they they need to redo it. They need to, you know, to just update it a little bit. But it was fun. You know, we 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 got out. But it it was kind of funny because my uh, my friend is he's renewing his vows in Las Vegas this weekend, and he invited me and my wife to go. And so we're going to Vegas uh, this weekend. We fly out Friday night, um, and. I don't know, maybe two or three weeks ago, my wife and I are talking to each other. It's like, man, we're crazy. Like, why are we, we're literally going to Mexico for a week and then we're going to come back and then we're going to fly out to Vegas like the next week. Like, why? And then, um, you know, I love my family, right? It, it's good to love your family. But we needed a va vacation after that vacation. Yep. So both my wife and I are extremely happy that we have a weekend Basically a weekend to, uh, to ourselves out in Vegas, and then uh, on I think Monday, my buddy flies in with his wife, and we're gonna go to their vow renewal ceremony by uh, none other than Elvis Presley, uh, somewhere up uh, 
north of the strip. So, you know, Elvis is in very high demand now. I mean, it, it's good that you're able to get him. I mean, you probably had to go through a medium of some sort to be able to do that. That couldn't have been cheap. I, I didn't pay for it. My my buddy, my buddy with his new his new job and money burning this hole in his pocket now, apparently. But hey, I'm but just, it'll I'm be fun. Saying, I mean, if if it's the fake Elvis, a whole bunch of people are going to have suspicious minds going to this thing. Thank you. Thank you very much. You missed this. You missed this since we've been gone the past couple of weeks, Josh. Oh, man. Um, but the weekend before that, uh, it had a really fun weekend um, uh, with the guys flying in. Uh, so uh, Mark and Caleb flew in. Uh, our friend Stephen, uh, otherwise known as Evil Bob Dole, uh, drove up from uh, Ohio. And, uh, yeah, we got an Airbnb downtown. We uh, just kind of basically hung out. We, I mean, it, it was kind of funny. Uh, uh, you know, we, we ran a, a short stream for Ascot, um, which none of you watched, uh, which I'm not really uh, surprised because, A, it's early. Point of Friday. order, I actually did watch for about <laughs> three minutes. There we go. I'm uh, out but, on the West Coast, though, so time-wise, it's tricky. Yeah, but it was more of a test uh, because it, that was the first time that I had done run a live stream with this software that we're using now. So um, just wanted to test it out. Seemed like everything worked fine. I used our mobile setup, and it was the same setup that we ended up using for the pool party at Hawthorne, which was kind of tough actually to to record. Um, and uh, you know, I guess we can we can talk a little bit about that. Um, but yeah, we, we had a great time. Um, we went to. A, uh, first, I took the Stephen and uh, and Caleb. We went to one of my favorite breweries in the city, uh, Revolution. It was basically walking distance from where we we were at, but um, it, it started raining, so we just we ended up just driving. It was probably not even like a mile from uh, from where where we were. Not staying, even so. a mile, and some rain made you drive. Wimps, all of yeah. you, wimps. <laughs> yeah, it, it actually it actually rained pretty uh pretty hard for about a half hour, so it was actually a good call. But we went and got some food uh, around there. Uh, we went to um went to Revolution. Uh, then on Friday we bet Ascot all morning, and then went to um we went to the Aviary, which is a like really really awesome and just insane uh, yeah that's the place bar. you've talked up to me a couple of different times yeah yeah we went there and then we went to one of my favorite spots uh close to there too called cruz blanca which is a uh mexican restaurant and uh brewery um had some good cocktails good beer and stuff there so that was a uh, that was a good time and then um yeah and then i think we fired away at we might have even fired away to australia and charlestown i don't even know what else we were betting at but the main event was actually on Saturday, where uh, we were invited to to host a pool party at uh, at a Hawthorne OTB out in Joliet. Uh, so the good people over at, at Hawthorne um, asked if we'd be willing to do it, and so we're like, "Yeah, that'd be fun." So the premise is basically uh, you get a thought, we get a thousand dollar thousand dollars to bet. Um, I originally thought it was a thousand dollar bankroll, but after we got about six or seven hundred dollars in they were like no you you can only bet like you're supposed to bet the thousand dollars right so like it's basically like you we're only churning a thousand dollars through which is fine they gave us you know they gave us the vouchers and stuff um but like we were like we were we were thinking it was like a contest right so we're like all right like how much do we throw at this last race it changes your entire approach yeah. yeah but um you know what we it, the day did not start out great because um we probably left we left the house probably about 15 minutes late not a big deal right we left ourselves about an hour to get there set up get the lay of the land get a stream set up going to get everything getting there well um i there was a, this weird traffic thing trying to turn and I was basically at a red light stuck in the middle of the intersection. So I basically went the other way, right? Like, cause it was like, I was basically blocked. I, if I would have stayed there, I would have blocked traffic. And I'm like, all right, I'm not going to be that guy. So I just kind of swerved and went straight. And, um, 
apparently that was a really bad move because it probably extended our uh, drive to the place by about a half hour, 45 minutes. Okay. So note we, to self, if I ever go to Illinois for one of these things, Josh doesn't drive. Got it. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically we made it there maybe about 10 minutes before start time. So we had already kind of planned out uh, our bets or at least our big bets that we wanted to make. We wanted to attack the, um, the thistle down pick five. Uh, we wanted to attack a couple of races at Hawthorne. There were some spot plays at, at Aqueduct, and I had a couple of races at Churchill Downs that I liked. So we kind of all looked at our different races, had a plan, and, you know, um, what's the, uh, the the Mike Tyson quote? Everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face. Pretty well, much, the, yeah. the traffic was basically the punch in the face um, because we're expecting to get there nice and early, get there and um, be able to set everything up and everything. And basically it was like, all right, let's set up like the live stream ended up becoming a, a second thought. Right. And um, which was fine. You know, we, we really wanted to um, focus on the bets and focus on the people there. Uh, obviously the, the people from Hawthorne are great. Uh, so Rhonda uh, was there. Uh, she's um, one of the people that runs, runs the contest. She was awesome. Uh, the marketing guy, Dakota, unfortunately he got sick. Um, and so he wasn't able to be there, but he's a great guy who's easy to work with. Um, and uh, Michelle who runs the OTBs, um, all great people. Um, and they made sure we were taken care of, uh, you know, they had food for us, drinks, they even bought us in for a share of the, the pool party, which was really nice of them. I was not expecting that. Um, but we basically lost about, I don't know, a third of our bankroll within the first two races because we were knocked out of, of all that stuff. And then we're like, oh, okay, uh, what are we going to do? And yeah, I guess, you know, it, it's, it's kind of the thing about like group tickets, right? Uh, and how you build them and things like that. And we were really trying to... Um, we were really trying to make sure that we were, I mean, we were trying to make the people money, right? Um, we ended up, I forget how much it was, about five, fifteen, six hundred dollars $600, something like that, out of the 1000 is what what we churn, what we kept. It's the profit that we made. Well, not really profit. I mean, we technically lost $400, but... It sounds better the other way, though. It does sound better the other way, right? Uh, but uh, it was kind of funny because uh, Caleb, uh, Caleb's been on a bit of a hot streak with sports betting, and... Uh, he had a really funny quote today. It was something like, uh, I think he was talking about how much money he's up betting soccer, and he doesn't watch soccer at all. And he's like, I'm up like $800 betting soccer, but I, but you know, doing horse racing, I turned a thousand dollars into 600. Uh, <laughs> you know, so, um, but it was cool. Um, you know, we we had some, we we got a little unlucky, I think, with some of the things. Uh, I think the first race in that that pick five at um, Thistledown, there was a coupled entry that we hated. And we probably, I think we took two or three of the other horses. And it was like one of the other horses that we didn't have covered that won. The coupled entry didn't win. Oh, uh, jeez, That's the and, worst. So when you're right about a favorite being bad and you don't cash. That is the absolute stone cold worst. Yeah. So we had, uh, I, I think we had the right idea. We, we got a bit unlucky, but uh, it does sound like uh, like they uh, they they like you know people enjoyed it they uh, they enjoyed having us and um, you know hopefully we'll we'll get to work with them again coming up here soon. They just had their invitational tournament this past weekend. Unfortunately, I was not able to go because of uh, being in Mexico and uh, just would have been burning money uh, not having any time to prepare uh, for that. But, Josh, really quick, before you go much further, can you hit the applause button for something with that tournament, please? Thank you. Um, shout out to our friends there, Emily Gullickson, Ed DeRosa, Mike Somich. They put on an absolutely fantastic broadcast from that tournament this past weekend. That's something that any track that puts on an event like that should be doing for major events like that moving forward. There is a market for that sort of thing. There's a market for horse player friendly content that's presented in a way that's not insulting to the average viewer. It's really good stuff. And I thought all three of them and everybody behind the scenes did an absolutely great job. Yeah, I think uh, I think next year we might. Um, I, I don't know. I've, I haven't talked to the guys, but I know Mark 
uh, was especially interested in maybe trying to play in that or the um, at least the Hawthorne tournaments, the $500 ones that they run the same weekend. So um, we might try and plan something around that. We'll, we'll see. We'll see uh, how things go. All um, I ask is that if one of our people plays in that tournament, they set up a booth and we can Statler and Waldorf the absolute shit out of them as they're playing. That's the role I was born to play, man. Goodness. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, yeah, they they did a great job with that tournament. Uh, you know, shout out to Tony Joe, uh, um, who I, I've I've talked to a couple times. I know you've talked to a little bit to Andrew. Real He's nice guy. Incredibly sharp. Yeah, very sharp. And uh, yeah, so he was able to win it. And I, I saw, I think it was one of the Matisse brothers, I think finished second. And yep. then Dennis Montoro, I think who's another uh, um, pro player. I think he finished third. So um, yeah, a, a really cool event that they put on. Um, I always appreciate that they that there's no VIG uh, for their, their tournament. Um, you know, I, we, we've talked about NHC and its takeout structure and how player unfriendly it is. Um, you know, if you get an NHC seat and you're not paying any VIG, I mean, that's, that's about as good of a deal as you're going to get. Uh, in so, addition to the bonus you get, if you wind up winning the NHC and one of those big tournaments. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, yeah, those are basically the only NHC qualifiers I still play. Um, I've, uh, I'll, I'll probably try and turn out for, um, for Thanksgiving. Uh, they do a Thanksgiving tournament, but, um. Yeah, it should be. Uh, yeah, it, it it looked like a really fun event. I, I was it was a shame I wasn't able to do it, but um, we'll we'll see we'll see about next year. But um, Andrew, I did um, I did want to shout you out a little bit. Uh, I, I mean, I know you are basically uh, your your number your own number one fan. Uh, you know, uh, we, we we frequently talk uh, in in private chat. Um, that you're not in. I mean, just like the, the three of us, how oh, we course, wish, how, how we wish, how we wish we could promote ourselves as good as you promote yourself. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you've been doing uh, the shot in um, kind of simulcast, the new simulcast feed has been been coming out. Which you know, I think we've talked we've talked privately at least a little bit, and and you know, there's obviously there's I think some kinks still being worked out. But uh, you've been you've been pretty red hot. Uh, you know, uh, I, I saw that there was a highlight video that, that came out that showed some of your, uh, your winners and, uh, yeah, I mean the, the strike rate you've been having is, is, is crazy. Uh, you've been, you've been pretty hot to start so far. I appreciate that. Thank you. That's, that's very kind. Uh, first of all, going back to something you said about being good at self-promotion, whatever guys just watch pro wrestling. It's not hard. <laughs> watch pro wrestling for a month. Take notes. That's it. And once you realize that my entire shtick is a pro wrestling act and that there's no truth behind the ego that sometimes gets portrayed out there, I become a lot more easy to tolerate. That was actually uh, one of the reasons why Jason Beam was able to get me a little bit after a couple of years where he absolutely didn't. I said, Jason, you remember when Al Bundy talked up having four touchdowns in a single game for Paul Kai? Right here. Yeah. And at that point, it was like, this makes so much sense now. And there we go. So shout out to Jason. Hope all is well. He, by the way, put out a video from the press box at Colonial Downs. That turf course looks majestic. That's going to be a lot of fun to handicap over the course of the summer. In addition, of course, to my duties for the pink sheet with Saratoga. But the Hong Kong stuff came together really, really quickly about a month, six weeks ago. Uh, I was approached by some fantastic people in Australia that are the liaisons for the Hong Kong Jockey Club. They work for an agency. They handle all of that stuff. And I've been incredibly fortunate to be able to have the success that I've had to this point, that being the key term. Because, of course, the second this goes out, I am doomed for like an 0 for 30 stretch. Handicapping Hong Kong is freaking hard. Um there are complaints that American racing fans have about field size here in the States. You get five horses, six horses, seven horses, whatever. Over in Hong Kong, 12 horses, 14 horses, every race, every time they run. Now that's fantastic from a value standpoint, because if you have a strong opinion, you're probably going to get a price on it. 
Uh, the other night at Sha Tin, we're recording this on Tuesday night. This was Monday at Sha Tin. I wound up starting off the card with a $31 horse. The best jockey on the circuit is a guy by the name of Zach Purton. He rode a first-time starter. That first-time starter didn't get bet and wound up knifing through the middle of the field, winning and paying $30.90. If you have a strong opinion and you bet it and you're correct, you're going to make a fair amount of money. These pools are gigantic. It takes a gigantic splash to be able to affect the odds the way we see in the States sometimes. It's a lot of fun. It's been an absolute blast, despite some of the comments that have been sent my way on the Twitterverse. But I got to tell you, uh, I'm incredibly fortunate. This is something that I am very, very grateful to a number of people for, for being able to make this happen. This is something that I'm happy to be able to contribute to. The people at the Hong Kong Jockey Club are some of the best in the world at what they do. And if I can play a small part in that and give people some winners, that's that's the dream right there. I'm incredibly, incredibly happy with the work that's been done to this point. Uh, they actually surprised me with that video that you mentioned. This was a week and a half ago or so. I woke up six in the morning, checked my email, and there was a link to download this video. And I was genuinely emotionally floored. I Nobody had ever done that for me before. The only person trumpeting 142 winners at a single Saratoga meeting up until the pink sheet did what they did and took out an ad this past year was me. Um, being able to you know, be recognized in some small way for that, that's really cool. And to anybody who thought it was me that produced that, to anybody who thinks it's me cutting in in times that they don't want me to be there, no. And also... You really need to go outside and sniff some grass. Just saying. I'm incredibly fortunate. Uh, between, I, Honestly, we were talking before we came on this show. I am incredibly fortunate to have three of the best freelance gigs in horse racing. The stuff I do for Hong Kong, the stuff I do for this place back here, Saratoga, and the stuff that I do for the Alameda County Fair in Pleasanton, which is going into its final four days, Thursday through Sunday, finished off by the Pleasanton Mile on Sunday afternoon, which, if I am not mistaken, is the most expensive race in the United States on that particular day. I'm incredibly fortunate, man. And I know I've said that a lot, but beneath the exterior and the, the, the pro wrestling aspect of things, I'm incredibly blessed. I've got a full-time job that I like very much. I've got three freelance gigs that I like very, very much. I'm officially just less than a year away from a wedding that I'm incredibly excited for. We've started putting a lot of things in place that are going to be really, really cool. We're talking about our honeymoon in Portugal and Spain. Things are really good, man. And that's, that's no act. Yeah, that's... Uh... Yeah, I, you know, I, I always, I joke with you, you know, like, I, I know that you didn't create that video. I wish you created that video because I think it would make things much more funny. Look, I'm but... just saying, <laughs> I have been accused of a whole bunch of ego driven stuff from a whole bunch of people that, as it turns out, have absolutely no idea how the sauce is made. If you have questions about how the sauce is made, here's a radical idea. Ask me respectfully. Hmm. And maybe, just maybe... I'll be able to, you know, set you straight here, but my goodness, it's just the things some people think about and the ways some people use social media to, to quote the great American Taylor Swift, you need to calm down. <laughs> yeah. You didn't think you were getting a Taylor Swift reference. Anyway. No, I, I definitely <laughs> did not. I definitely did not see that one coming, but, um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's it's been a uh, you know Hong Kong is a, is a fun fun circuit to handicap. Obviously, you know Matt and I do the the Hong Kong podcast, and we um, you know we, we look at the last three races, and um, they're, they're just fun puzzles. Uh, it's it's fun to look at races in a different way because you know th yeah they have the late pick three, um, 
but you know we don't have access to the same pools yet uh, as far as like the pick six and, and other uh, horizontal jackpot wages and stuff like random stuff that they got going on over there. So I mean, you're really looking at single race bets there. You know, you're yeah. lo- looking at win bets. You're looking at um, you know the Quinella. Uh, I, I prefer playing the Quinella pool over the Exacta pool just because the amount of money in the pool. Uh, the Quin- the Exactas aren't really a thing um, there, so the Quinella pool is always much, much larger. And then the Trifecta pool is always very healthy. Uh, so, you know, if you're able to to put together some uh, some bets uh, with those, uh, you know, you, you can definitely make some money. It's just, you know, it, it's just a way, much different way of playing compared to, I think, how, how a lot of us are wired now where it's like, you got to play the pick five. It's a pick five, pick five. You know, and uh, uh, yeah, you, you kind of got to rewire things. And then obviously, every race is basically a handicap race except for the stakes. Yep. Right. So you got to start, you know, considering weight and, and other things, um, uh, and, and class system. Yeah, it's it, it. There's there's a couple other intricacies with that, and you know, we talked a little bit about that on on the podcast. But yep. Um, so two quick things. First of all, if you want to get up to speed on relevant Hong Kong FAQs, the Daily Racing Forum has a bunch of videos that have been produced. You can see my head on a stick figure in a couple of them. Uh, they really did a tremendous job with the animations on some of them. So there is some information there. The one bet, Josh, that you didn't mention that I just want to spotlight really quickly is the Omni Swinger bet which you may see at Woodbine if you've handicapped their races in the last year or two. Basically, you're betting on two horses to hit the board, and you can bet multiple different combinations. There are a total of six Omni Swingers that wind up hitting in a particular race because you wind up with six different combinations amongst the top three. So it's a fun wager. You don't necessarily need a massive bankroll in order to play Hong Kong. Uh, You just need to be creative and you need to be able to take stands with your stronger opinions and don't necessarily be intimidated if that strong opinion, as it turns out, is say 30 to 1, 40 to 1, because with those big fields, you're going to get bettable prices. So just it's the same as handicapping any other track at its core. Have your strong opinions. Bet your strong opinions accordingly to where if you're right, it will hurt them to pay you. Anything else you want to talk about, Andrew? So my dad's coming into town tomorrow. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, That's actually the reason that we're recording this on Tuesday night. Uh, My dad is winging his way west, and he will be here for four days of the Alameda County Fair. He's actually going to be up with me for at least three, maybe four of the handicapping seminars that we run. If you're listening to this and you happen to be in Northern California, come on out. The handicapping seminars start at 1230 p.m., Post time for these races is 1.45 p.m. We go about an hour. It's a lot of fun. Uh, This is an absolute blast and something that I'm incredibly fortunate to be able to do. There are a lot of places in this game that unfortunately at various times in the past couple of years have made it difficult to be a racing fan at times. The Alameda County Fair and the Northern California Fair Circuit makes it really really easy. I wound up going with my fiance and a couple of her friends on Saturday. I hooked them up with a box. Uh, Shout out to Jen and Larry Schwartzlander and a whole bunch of people at CARF for helping us out with that. But I picked a good day to have a good day. Uh, I went four for seven. My best bet was a winner. Uh, I got to teach them why the odds change late because my best Mm. bet was seven to two with one minute to post and got hammered all the way down to even money. Um, that was, that was not fun. Uh, that was a case where I legitimately thought everyone sitting around me with $5 win tickets was going to wind up cashing for a not insignificant chunk of change. Then someone came in and absolutely hammered the price down one quick hammer, the price down story on Saturday. I think at the Alameda County fair saw the single biggest win wager from one person or group of people that I have ever seen in my years of doing this for the Alameda County Fair at Pleasanton. Uh, The Oak Tree Sprint was the feature. It was won by a horse named Clovis Connection, who's a very nice sprinter that you may see in some graded races later this year in Southern California. Clovis Connection came onto the track and was nine to five. Someone or a group of someone's put down 10 grand 
to win on Clovis Connection <laughs> with about three, four minutes to post. And all of a sudden, Clovis Connection went from nine to five to one to five. Now, Clovis Connection wound up winning. And I think what happened was they saw the post parade. And this horse, who was already going to be one of the major players, looked like a killer. Uh, it was probably the best horse that I have seen in the flesh all meet long at the Alameda County Fair and never once looked like a loser. Wound up drifting up all the way to three to five. So those that bet $10,000 walked away with a $6,000 profit. As I mentioned in the next day's handicapping seminar, if you're looking for some place to reinvest, I've got a wedding coming up next June. Mm -hmm. Let's talk. But <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. It's always a lot of fun when my dad comes out. Uh, Going to need to make sure that this guest room is a little bit cooler, though, uh, because I got to tell you, as I mentioned, I got a fan offset and it says it is 87 degrees in here and I need to record my Thursday Hong Kong stuff after we're done wrapping up here. So it's going to be a little steamy in here and uh, hopefully we can do something that uh, that makes my dad a little comfortable. But it's always fun having him out here, especially when we're able to do seminars together. Uh, anytime I do it with him, the first thing I ask people is, OK, show of hands. How many of you got into the game because your parents brought you to the racetrack when you were a kid? Inevitably, two thirds of the people in the crowd raised their hands. And I said, yep, that's why he's here. So <laughs> it's always a blast. It's always a lot of fun. And as I warned people on Sunday, if you folks think I'm insufferable, wait till you see where I get it from. <laughs> oh. Your dad's a sweetheart. My, my dad's a good guy, and um, I don't get to see him a lot. He, of course, is 3,000 miles away, but we're able to do stuff like this. I'm able to fly uh, for the last week of the Saratoga meet, so we got a couple of cool things planned, and this weekend's going to be a lot of fun, uh, taking my fiancé to dinner one of the nights that he's here, so that's going to be a blast, and I'm also going to take him out for a late Father's Day dinner as well. Haven't decided where that's going to be yet, but there's, there's a couple of restaurants up here in the Bay Area. That's something we do pretty well, so I'm not all that worried. Well, that's going to do it for us here on Drank and Champagne. Obviously, check us out on therunglead.com at wrong underscore lead. Uh, you can find Andrew at Andrew Champagne on Twitter at our winnersandwiners.com, andrewchampagne.com. Uh, you can find him interrupting uh, the uh, Hong Kong feed uh, at the, the worst possible on time. It, people. They're working on it. <laughs> uh, and obviously, I'm at Cherry Drank. Uh, I think we'll have another episode of Drink or uh, of uh, You've Got to Be Shot sending me out this week, but we got to work on uh, schedules for that. But uh, if not, guys, have a good week. Let's make some money. 